Introduction to Molecular Orbital Theory, Part 4, Heteronuclear Diatomic Molecules. Okay, so we are on the last part of our Molecular Orbital Theory discussion. And the last thing that we need to talk about is heteronuclear diatomic molecules. And these are molecules that are composed of two different elements. So the homonuclear diatomic molecules that we just talked about those are composed of the same element. These can be two different elements. Now all of the rules and procedures for, for the molecular orbital theory for homonuclear diatomics, all of that generally applies also to heteronuclear diatomic molecules. But the reason why we're talking about this in its own special part of the lecture is that the electronegativity difference between the atoms changes the molecular orbital correlation diagram. So we have to make a few modifications. Now one thing that comes in when we talk about heteronuclear diatomic molecules is that the molecular orbitals formed are not symmetrical anymore. So for instance, the carbon diatomic molecule, the sigma 2s, has that peanut shape. And remember, I'm not showing the radial node. And this is a homonuclear example. Now, molecular orbitals for heteronuclear diatomics are polarized toward the more electronegative atom. So this is carbon monoxide, and we have oxygen here with a lot more electron density than carbon. And so the uh, electron density is polarized toward oxygen in this heteronuclear diatomic. Now, as the electronegativity difference between the atoms increases, the interacting orbitals will be at different energies. And so that's one of the big differences here. So atomic orbitals for the more electronegative atom are going to be overall lower in energy than the corresponding orbital for the atom that is less electronegative. Now, the more electronegative atom also contributes more to the bonding molecular orbitals and energies, and that's because they start off at lower energy. And the less electronegative atom, which has higher energy atomic orbital, is going to contribute more to these anti-bonding MOs and their energies. Okay, so here's an example correlation diagram. So here we have the less electronegative atom and the corresponding atomic orbitals. Okay, and so you can see we're dealing with second period diatomics. Less electronegative, so in our previous example, carbon monoxide, this could be carbon. And then the more electronegative atom is on this side. And you can see that the atomic orbitals for that atom are lower in energy than the corresponding ones for the less electronegative atom. Now, more of this atomic orbital, say the 2s, from the more electronegative atom, it's going to contribute more to the bonding molecular orbital. So you can see there's less of an energy difference between the more electronegative atomic orbital 2s and this bonding MO versus the difference in energy between this 2s on the less electronegative atom and the bonding MO. There's a big difference in energy there, but less so for the anti-bonding. And so the same thing applies for all of the pi and sigma molecular orbitals that are formed from p orbitals. Okay, so here's another little example. So here's the cyanate anion. And here we have nitrogen, which is more electronegative than carbon. And so you can see the atomic orbitals are lower in energy. The atomic orbitals for carbon are higher in energy. The Sigma star is closer in energy to the carbon 2s as opposed to the nitrogen 2s, but the sigma bonding 2s molecular orbital is closer in energy to the nitrogen 2s. And so again, same thing applies for the p orbitals. All of the bonding MOs are closer in energy to the nitrogen p orbitals. And all of the p orbitals, p atomic orbitals, are closer in energy to the antibonding for carbon. Now, when you're choosing an MO correlation diagram, you still have the choice of a first or second order. Now, if both atoms in the molecule are first or second order, so if they match, then 
use that correlation diagram. Use the one that they both agree on. Now, if one atom in the molecule is first order and the other second, then you have to look up the correlation diagram, or it'll have to be given to you. But you wouldn't have a way to figure out which one to use for that. And so just a reminder, we use first order for oxygen, fluorine, and neon, second order for lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, and nitrogen, and then, of course, all of their associated ions. Okay, so the procedure to determine the bond order is the same as for homonuclear diatomic molecules. So the same equation applies, so you'll recognize this from our homonuclear discussion. Okay, so the procedure for writing molecular orbital electron configurations is, all the, is also the same. So you fill the molecular orbitals from lowest to highest energy, unpairing where appropriate, following Hund's rule, and then you write the electron configurations based on the electrons in those molecular orbitals as you go up the correlation diagram. So it's exactly the same as what we did before. Okay, and examples will be posted separately, so look for those.